Jai Shishi Guru Gauranga Gandhari Vika Giridhari Shishi Radha Vinod Bihari Radha Govinda Jyoki Jai Shri Jagannath Bhagdev Subhadra Sudarshan Chakra Jyoki Jai <coughs> Shri Giriraj Govardhan Ki Jai Jai Shri Nitai Gauranga Ki Jai Jai Nishinga Bhagavan Ki Jai Jai Shila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Jai Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Jai Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Shri Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath Shri Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raghunath Sada Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai Shri La Sarup Damadar Vray Raghunandari Gaur Parsita Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Charya Shri Mahadivas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Shri Gaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Shri Navadrita Dham Ki Jai, Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa 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 Varadam, Vada Shavanatma Kashi Vraja Mandala Dham Ki Jai, Shri Amakunda Radha Kunda Yamuna Ganga Tulsi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Jai Shri Giriraj Govardhan Ki Jai, Vantaraj Shri Madhubhagavatam Ki Jai, Jai Bhakti Vigna Vinash and Shri Nishringa Deva Ki Jai Bhakti Prabhu Shri Kumar Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Siddharsan Chakra Jiva Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Kshetra Dham Ki Jai Adanta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Tribhuvna Pavana Harinam Samkirtana Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Pramanandi Green pillow, on my bed, on my back. Bande ham shi guru shi jutaha pata kamana shi guru navaishnavam shcha shi rupam sagra jatam sahagana raghunatam vitam tam sajiva sadvaitam sabhutam Hare Jana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Sahagana Lalita <coughs> Shri Vishakhan Vitamascha Om Abhyanati Nirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Mukam Paroti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Giriam Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Guru Vena Tadanam Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bia Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo <coughs> Vaishnavebhya Namo Namaha Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Tise Namo Nityanandam Namastubhyam Premananda Pradayane Kalo Kalmashanashaya Janava Padaye Namaha 
Panisha Tattva Tvakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari <coughs> Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Cha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> My Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipful beloved Diksha and Siksha Guru Devs, Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Astatarasata Sri Shiva, AC Bhaktivedanta, Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada, Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Shiva, Bhakti Rakshak Sri Dharko Swami Maharaj, and Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Astro Tarasata Sri Shiva Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. My Dandavat Pranams <coughs> to my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga, to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, whose Upade Shavali we are studying. And uh, my Dandavat pronounced to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavis. <laughs> Today I looked it up on Google search, Ubade Shavali, or Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. <laughs> and it was one of our sites from back in the 1990s. Um, but the Upadeh Shavali was very different, very different from the one that we're reading here. So I'm going to send a message to Madhukar Prabhu and ask him, what's up? Yeah. I could, we could also compare the previous song books to, to this one. But I'm sure that this is the most authentic, otherwise we would not have put it in here. It may be that this is the one that was most often published by Gaudiya Samiti um, when they published their Gaudiya Giti Gucha unabridged version. So this may be. Okay, so now we've read we've read the first six and the fourth, fifth, and sixth are the ones we focused on yesterday. I'm reading them again. <coughs> Number four, the acceptance of Sri Harinam and direct realization of Bhagavan are one and the same. Number five, those who equate the demigods with Vishnu they are unable to serve Bhagavan. Why are they unable to serve Bhagavan? Because they're considering... Because they're considering... Demigods like Shiva Rama to be equal to Vishnu. Right. But why does that make them unable to serve Bhagavan? Because they're not seeing that... Bhagavan is the supreme authority mm -hmm. who 
who is right. in charge of these other uh, things that's mentioned? Yeah, because unless unless someone understands Bhagavad Tattva, who is Bhagavan? What is Bhagavan? What is his position? What is my position? Then there is no possibility of serving him. Just like in this material world, there are people that are very, um, they give all their adoration and their respect to powerful material personalities, right? Or celebrities, etc. Right? But they have a warped conception because they're only judging according to a few minor qualities of the material body. Right? Minor qualities. Oh, this person is a very powerful person. This person is a very wealthy person. They have some opulence. They have some opulence. Right? And those opulences are attractive. Oh, a very famous person. That's attractive. But they're not understanding the difference between the jiva, who has very minute opulence, right? I mean, even on this earth planet, there are persons that have greater opulence than most other human beings, right? (laughs) But their opulence is completely mediocre and insignificant in comparison with demigods from upper planetary systems. We go beyond the material creation and we come to, into the spiritual sky, then we see that the Vaikuntha region, the Paravyom, they have innumerable Vaikuntha planets and forms of the Lord and all the associates there are eternally liberated and they have forms resembling resembling the Lord's form and so forth. And part of their liberation, one of their types of liberation is called Sharsti. There are four types of liberation. Sarupya, Samipya, Salokya, and Sharsti. So, Sharsti means they can have the same opulence as the Lord. Not fully, of course, but they also have great opulence there, far more than any demigod in any universe, including Lord Brahma, far, far beyond his opulence. So Sarupya, they can have a form similar to the Lord's. Salokya, they can live on the same planet as the Lord. And Samipya, they can have direct personal association with the Lord. So those opulences are there in that level. And then we come to Lord Narayan himself and his qualities and his opulences. He's actually Krishna. He's an expansion directly of the Supreme Lord. Right? But he only has partial opulence in comparison with Krishna. So Krishna is not called the Supreme Personality of Godhead for nothing. (laughs) He is the supreme possessor of the highest complete opulence, qualities, everything, everything. He is supreme, right? So if someone thinks that a demigod of the material universe is equivalent to the Supreme Lord, that means they have no proper knowledge at all. You see, this is unfortunately the condition in Hinduism today and has been for some time. But they're easily misled because they don't understand that Bhagavan is the Supreme and everyone else is his servant. So that's why the essential. Uh, the essential verse spoken by Lord Chaitanya about the swarup of the jiva, the constitutional position of the jiva. What is it? What is the constitutional position of the jiva? 
Jiver Swaru Hoy Krishner Nityadas. So here he first he's first of all telling that the Swarup of the Jiva is eternal servant of Krishna. Now that means every single Jiva, even the Jivas that are in demoniac uh, category in this world, very demon, demon Jivas, but actually their Swarup, beyond their body and their subtle body, is the same as every Jiva. They are eternal servants of the Lord that will not change. Only they're undergoing the chain of the repetition of birth and death, karmic reactions, and all of that. So those uh, jivas, they will one day, one day in some future distant time, in some universal manifestation, they will gradually become pious, and they'll become devotees, and then they'll become liberated and live eternally as the servants of Krishna. So the pure devotees, they see everyone in that way. They see all jivas in that way. That all the jivas, they're all serving Krishna. They're all eternal servants of Krishna. So anyway, if someone does not have the proper understanding, they'll never be able to chant Shuddhanam, the pure name of Krishna because they're committing this aparat, this offense, you know? I mean, even in the material world, <laughs> if there's somebody that's in a very big, powerful position, say, president of a country or whatever, you know, and some fool, you know, doesn't recognize their supremacy, right, and treats them like some ordinary person, well, that's an offense. You know, by social etiquette and so forth, it's an offense. So what to speak of the Supreme Lord? So that offense will prevent them uh, from having uh, the opportunity to relish the pure nectar of the holy names of Krishna. Even if they chant, which they do. Many worshippers of demigods, they chant. We see that in the modern yoga movement They'll chant any old mantra to any demigod, any this, that, no discrimination whatsoever, Durga, 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 you know? But they have no understanding at all of Bhagavad Tattva. And worse than that, they also consider that the jiva, the jivas are God. That they all merge, become one, and we're all supreme. So it's very ludicrous, very childish and foolish for them. So that's why guru is needed. Guru. Uh, the guru is the personality who has realized who is Bhagavan, who is Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the verse. Upadyeta jigyasu shreya uttamam Tasmad guru prapadyeta Jigyasu Shreya Uttamam Shabde Parecha Nishnatam Brahmani Upasamashrayam. This is a verse from 11th Canto, I think I'm forgetting. Um, and this is the verse where the qualities and the qualification of Guru is being stated. Uh, Tasmad Guru Prabhatyeta Jigyasu Shreya Uttamam. This is the classic verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam regarding Guru, Guru Tattva. So, saying here, therefore, Tasmad, Tasmad Guru Prabhatyeta, one must surrender to Guru, Prabhatya, Prabhatyeta. Tasmat Guru Prabhadyeta Jigyasu Shreya Uttamam. And one must inquire from Guru what is my ultimate benefit? What is the ultimate benefit that I can attain? 
श्रेय जिज्ञासु श्रेय उत्तम उत्तम मीन्स टॉपोस सो डिड यू एवर हियर दैट देयर आर टू वर्ड्स uh in sanskrit shreyas and prayas no okay i'm telling you. so sh- prayas is the ordinary benefits that one derives people are mostly trying to get prayas prayas means uh the benefits from doing a little bit of work or oh, then i can get some money then i can buy this that this that so this is short term benefit or a little child especially they become very excited upon getting some thing and as soon as it's taken away they become immediately they start crying you see so the conditioned souls in this world they're all trying to get material benefits which will make them happy but that's called prayas uh, those things can be attained with little endeavor mm. but shreyas is what chaitanya mahaprabhu talks about in the sikshastakam in the in the first verse he's saying shreya kairava chandrika vitaranam vidyavadhi jeevanam cheto darpanam marjanam bhava mahadava agni nirvaparam shreya kairava chandrika vitaranam so here the word shreya is used today i was listening to shila prabhupada's lecture in the beginning of the second chapter of bhagavad gita and guess what on the listing where it tells what lecture this is this was his very first recorded lecture in america i happened upon it today it said first recorded lecture of shila prabhupada it was in march of 1966 and it was very interesting because at that time prabhupada didn't have followers but he had a few people that were coming to attend his lectures that he was giving in an office room in a building that he rented just the office room he said it had like a toilet and a sink and and the room the office and that's all and he would walk from there to Dr. Mishra's apartment a few blocks away and that's where he would shower and he would also cook there so you know this was the first lecture and it was on uh verse 6 and 7 of the second chapter of bhagavad gita where arjuna has now exhausted all of his arguments to krishna why he should not fight right so let me just look it up real quickly <clears throat> so in this in the seventh verse well i'll read a couple of verses before that so this is chapter 2 you know what chapter 1 you've gone over that chapter 1 how arjuna is seeing all the soldiers and he's telling krishna why he shouldn't fight so now sanjaya said seeing arjuna full of compassion and his mind uh depressed his eyes full of tears then madhusudan krishna spoke the following words the supreme personality of god had said my dear arjuna kutastva kashmalam idam vishame samupastitam anaryam jushtam asvargyam 
Akirti Karam Arjuna. So Krishna told Arjuna, my dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the progressive values of life. Uh, they do not lead to higher planets, but they lead to infamy. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he said to Arjuna, he said, so here is the term hridaya dorvalyam. You recognize that? What does that mean? Weakness of heart. Yes. So Krishna is telling, this is where the original term comes from, Bhagavad Gita. Uh -huh. Krishna is saying, O Sanaprita, do not yield to this degrading impotence. It does not become you, Arjuna. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Then Arjuna says, he says a couple of things more before Krishna starts to speak the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna says, Katam Vishva Maham Sankhe Dronam Cha Madhusudana Yishubi Pratyotsyami Pujarhav Arisudana Oh, 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 killer, oh, killer of enemies, Arjuna said. Oh, killer of Madhu, how can I counterattack with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drona, who are worthy of my worship? Guru Nahatva Himahan Bhavan Shreyo Bhaktam Baikshama Pihaloke Hatvarta Kamams to Guru Nihaiva so he says it would be better to live in this world by begging. Can you imagine Arjuna giving up his occupational duty as a Kshatri and going around begging? It would be, but he's saying it would be better to live by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of the great souls who are my teachers, my gurus. Even though they desire worldly gain, but they are my superiors. And if they are killed, everything we enjoy, it will be tainted with blood. Then he says, Nachaitad vidma katara no gariho yadva jayema yadiva no jayeyu yan eva hatva na jiji vishamas te vastita pramuke dartarashtra nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, then we should not care to live. Yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. So now comes the verse, verse number seven. This is the classic Guru verse. And this is what Prabhupada was speaking on. He's saying, Karpanya dosho pahatasva bhava, pricha mitvam dharma samud hachetaha, yashreya syan nishtitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham, sadimam tvam prapannam. So he admits to Krishna now, now I am confused about my duty. And I have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. <clears throat> and in this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. <laughs> in this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me? Shishya Steham. Now I am your disciple and I am a soul surrendered to you. Tvam Prapannam. I am now surrendered. Prapannam. Please instruct me. So, yes. And this purport is very classic by Srila Prabhupada. So, what is Arjuna expressing to Krishna? 
He's admitting. He's admitting. Really, I don't know. I don't know what is best for me. Here, the word Shreya is there. I'm talking about this because of the word Shreya. Shreya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shreya here is translated as what is all good for me? What is the best thing for me? Uh, what is my ultimate benefit that I can attain? It's called Shreya. So Arjuna is admitting that he's lost all his composure. Can you imagine you're about to fight a battle with millions of soldiers on the other side and you're the most renowned soldier. You're the most renowned uh, you know, um, fighter uh, in the whole, practically in the whole universe. Arjuna, he's the son of King Indra. And he even went to the heavenly planets. And he even received uh, these, these celestial weapons there. And he's famous throughout the whole earth planet as the greatest warrior, hmm? Kshatriya. But can you imagine being in such a condition where the war is about to start, and this war has been building up for many years, more than 20 years, more than 20 years. And in every single way, they tried to avoid this war. But it had to happen because it was the will of Krishna. It was the will of Krishna. And it was for the purpose of establishing Dharma. This war is Dharma Yuddha, uh, a religious, a Dharmic war. So, but he has become confused whether or not he should fight. Whether or not. And anybody that follows the whole story of the Mahabharata and understands from their very birth, from their very childhood, how uh, they were in a vulnerable condition. You see, they were in a vulnerable condition. And they went through so many hardships. And then also they had to uh, go to the forest for 12 years in exile. But anyway, the whole history, uh, it becomes very clear that the Pandavas were the rightful heirs to the throne and the rulership of the earth planet. They were the rightful heirs. And their demoniac cousin, brother, Duryodhana, was always trying to get rid of them by either killing them or in some way uh, eliminating them from the picture. So they couldn't do that. He couldn't accomplish that. Now the war is there. And the victor of the war will rule the earth. So did Krishna want Duryodhana to be the victor? No. He wanted the Pandavas to be the victors. That was Krishna's desire to establish Dharma. But because of this, you know, Karpanya dosha, this miserliness, this weakness, Arjuna had become temporary, be, temporarily bewildered by sentiment, you see. It was sentiment only. Uh, but nevertheless, it was affecting him. And therefore, he was so bewildered that he was ready to run from the battlefield and be defamed for the rest of his life. You see. But at any rate, you know, from one angle, he was expressing this mood of compassion, uh, and that's the symptom of a devotee, but it was wrongly placed at this time, the time, place, and circumstance. This was now the time to fight. So, <laughs> yes, he said, Samudha, Dharma Samudha Chaitaha. Yes, I'm bewildered in my heart. What is my duty? Yes. So he says, now I'm requesting you hmm, that you please tell me, ya shreyasyan nishtitam bruhi tanme, 
Now I want that you will tell me, O Krishna. Uh, and he says, Nishchitam, with absolute certainty. I want you to confirm and tell me what is best for me. What should I do? And then he says to Krishna, Shishyas Teham. You know what that means? I'm your disciple. Yes, I am your disciple. Sadhimam Tvam. Now, Tvam Prapannam. I am surrendered to you. And Sadhimam Tvam. You please instruct me. So this is the point where the Bhagavad Gita conversation begins. It's a very a powerful moment. And Srila Prabhupada in this lecture, he's sitting there with probably two or, two or three people maximum in his room. And he's giving a two hour long lecture on these few verses. And he comes to the point of explaining Guru. It's very interesting because this is Prabhupada directly dealing with people who are not devotees yet. You know? And they have some interest to come and to attend and like this. But Srila Prabhupada is giving very complete instructions to them. And you can tell <clears throat> he's only been in America at that point for six months or something like that. Six, seven months. And you can tell by his accent, uh, you know, has it changed a little bit over the years, you know. But you can tell that he's come from India and he's explaining to them many cultural things about India and about uh, the standards and the, you know, social etiquettes and things like that. So, anyway, the topic is Shreya, right? So we have to know that Shreya means ultimate benefit. And that's why in the Sikh Shastakam, Lord Chaitanya says, he says, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitarima. The holy names, the chanting of the holy names, causes the lotus, the white lotus of our good fortune, Shreya, of our ultimate good fortune, to bloom. The rays of the moon cause this night blooming lotus of the heart of our good fortune to bloom. So, Those who equate the demigods with Vishnu are unable to serve Bhagavan because they don't know what is their highest self-interest. Then we also read that establishing a printing press to print devotional books and preaching by organizing Namhata programs constitutes genuine service to what? Yes, Sri Mayapur. So now here's number seven. We are not doers of good or bad deeds. That's not what we are. Doers of good deeds, doers of bad deeds. No. Nor are we scholars. Nor are we illiterate. That's not what we are. Doers of good or bad deeds, scholars, or illiterate. Here's what we are. Carrying the shoes of Hari's pure devotees as our duty, we are initiates into the mantra Kirtaniya Sadahari. We are initiates into this mantra. And carrying the shoes of the pure devotees of Hari. That is our duty. 
Yes. What does it mean to carry the shoes of the pure devotees of Hari? Hmm? Carry his instructions? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carrying the shoes. A person who's a shoe carrier of someone. What's their position in relation to the person whose shoes that they're carrying? Serving. <laughs> Serving, yeah. In absolute... Uh, Absolute humility. You know, serving with no sense at all of false ego. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. Right? That's why he just said, we're not do-gooders or do-badders. That's not what we are. That's not our duty. Huh? Neither are we great scholars. Neither are we not great scholars, even illiterate. No, we're none of those things. We are the, the servants who carry the shoes of Lord Hari's pure devotees as our duty. It means I am so utterly insignificant in comparison with my Gurudev. In comparison with the pure Vaishnavas, I have no position of significance. I'm their shoe carrier. I'm their dedicated, completely surrendered carrier of their lotus shoes. This is a very deep statement because it necessitates that that servant will have full realization of who is this personality, that I am so fortunate to be the servant carrier of their shoes. This is the proper mood. Mm -hmm. This is the mood of a real disciple. Without this mood, we cannot really be a disciple. Mm -hmm. And then he says, that we are initiates into the mantra Kirtaniya Sadahari. What does that mean? Kirtaniya Sadahari. What is chanting the names of Hari? Yeah. Where is that line from? The third verse of Sikshastaka. You know it? Can say? Chunaravi, Sumachana, Tarupi, Sishana, Amani, Amani, Deva, Kirtan, Yasarahari. Yes, okay, not tell meaning. And line by line, say the Sanskrit and then say the meaning. This will be good. Chunaravi, Sumachana, one who is more humble than a blade of grass. Tador mm Apisanishana, -hmm. one who's more tolerant than a tree. Amanina mm -hmm. Manadena, uh, one who uh, expects no. One who doesn't one expect, who doesn't expect to be respected. One who ex doesn't expect any respect for oneself but gives all uh, honor and respects to others. Mm -hmm. This person, uh, mm -hmm. they are qualified to always chant the names of Hari. Yes, constantly. Constantly. Sada. Sada means always. Kirtaniya Sada Hari. So here, <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he says, we are initiates into that mantra. Kirtaniya Sada Hari. Which means that we are always seeing ourselves in this way. Trunada peace in each. I'm lower than a blade of grass. I have no big significant position. I'm the carriers of the shoes. Of the, I'm the servant of the pure devotees. Carrying their shoes on my head. 
And I'm initiated into this mantra, Kirtaniya Sadahari, which means the whole verse, Janata Visu Nichena. Because that's my only purpose, is to chant continually the holy names of Hari in a pure state of mind, in a humble state of mind. You see? So there's a lot in this one uh, statement that he's making here to teach us what really we are. We have no other false ego and position and identity other than this. <laughs> then the next one says preaching without proper conduct it falls within the category of karma mundane activity without criticizing the nature of others one should correct oneself this is my personal instruction but Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur is saying this, that anyone who is wanting to preach, but they themselves don't follow the actual principles, uh, their conduct uh, is not proper. But they're trying to preach. So what, what kind of preaching is that? Actually, he's saying here it's not preaching. He's saying it falls within the category of mundane activity, karma. It's a pretty heavy statement, huh, Jago? Yeah? 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 And we see that going on everywhere. So, if someone wants to preach, the message of Mahaprabhu, which we are told that we should do, then we have to first of all become a proper devotee. Uh, we have to act according to the instructions of Guru. Because if we don't, our preaching may be mundane activity. Even we're going out with books and so forth. Gurudev pointed this out in the beginning many times when he first came to the West, you know. He would mention this, of how book distribution can also be karma. You know, not that just because of the activity that you're doing. Suppose a person is preaching and they're telling people about Krishna. Huh? But yet, here he's saying that that very preaching can also be mundane activity. Because of the mentality, because of the behavior of the person. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's he tells that in many places about kirtan, you know. So he says, without criticizing the nature of others, one should correct oneself. This is the thing. There are always going to be uh, natures that other persons will demonstrate qualities and so forth that are very much below standard or that are even abominable okay but but he's saying here we should rather than criticizing the nature of others one should correct one's own self and then he says this is my personal instruction his personal instruction so main thing is that one should behave properly. And then the last one I'll read for tonight is number nine, serving the Brajvasis. Yes, serving the Brajvasis who felt great separation from Krishna when he left Braj to reside in Mathura this is our supreme constitutional occupation. Huh? Serving the Brajavasis. Who are the Brajavasis? Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, Vrishabhanu uh, Maharaj, Kirtida Sundari, 
Purnamasi uh, Yogamaya, Rinda Devi, Shimati Radharani, all of her Sakis, all the cowherd boys, all the Gopas, Gopis in Braj, all the cows, even the trees. This is our su supreme occupational duty, huh? is to serve them because they're feeling so much separation from Krishna when Krishna left Braj. So this is the position of the Manjaris, especially with Srimati Radhika. And this is a very high instruction. Yes. Serving the Vrajabhasis who felt great separation from Krishna when he left Braj to reside in Mathura is our supreme constitutional occupation. Gaur Pancha kalpa dhrubhashtra kripa sindhu bhe bhaja patitanam bhavani bhe.